Today I bring you Mourinho's Porto tactics after many requests. It picked up a quadruple in the test and phase of this. And if you do enjoy the tactics on this channel, please do leave a like, drop a little comment on what video you want to see next. And if you do enjoy the content that much as well, please do hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell. We are chasing in on 11k subs, but let's go ahead and talk about this tactic. So we have got two teams we're going to test with today. That is going to be current Porto and 98 Porto. Whenever we recreate a manager based around a certain sort of team, this is what we're going to be doing. And as you can see right now, we had an incredible season with FC Porto. Quite an easy Champions League final, though, as we do match up against Tottenham, which we do win. Nevertheless, we also win the Portuguese Premier League, the Portuguese Cup, and also the Portuguese Super Cup. We scored 95 league goals and only conceded 17. Did pick up a few red cards. It can be a bit aggressive, but I will go over multiple ways you can eliminate eliminate that from your game. In terms of the league table, it was utter dominance over in Portugal. 88 points going in our favour. Sporting coming in with 71, so not close at all if you look at this. And I mean, Benfica, what's going on? It's an absolutely shocking season from Benfica. Going over to the team stats, we are going to feature in absolutely loads of them. Actually going to be seven. We have most points per game at 2.59. Most goals at 95, obviously 25 more than Benfica. Most shots for at 764. Fewer shots against at 207. Most dribbles made coming in at 611. Quite a lot more than second place. Fewest conceded coming in at 17. And also the most clean sheets coming in at a very good 20. So incredible. They're sporting quite close to us though, I must say. Going over to the data hub though, we are going to go and have a little look. It's not the most high scoring tactic, as you can imagine, as a Mourinho style. But still a very good stat line. 2.79 goals per game. Conceded at just sitting at half a goal a game. 0.5. Nearly over... About 22 and a half shots a game, 22 if you want to be pretty much accurate, 86% pass completion, and a tackle win ratio of a 75.21. And as you can see, over in this league, we actually did score a high number of goals per 90 minutes compared to the average. So in this division, we actually were a real goal scorer and threat. Going over to the squad, we are going to go ahead and have a little look. We're going to be looking at 47. This man here is incredible absolute baller. I signed him, well, I signed him in my Bologna stream save, and he was absolutely incredible. We then go over to Taremi, picking up 43 goals, 12 for Varon, Otavio with 10, 9 for Carmo, Namaso coming in with 9 as well, 7 for Martinez. Now, as you can see, a lot of the bulk load is going to be carried by the, the sort of front two players, which is completely fine because, you know, they're not far off. Well, they, they put 90 goals in between them, which is absolutely incredible. And it's not an issue at all because whenever you play two up front, you can expect majority of them goals, the bulk load, to be scored by those. So as long as you've got two doing it and not just relying on one, that's all that matters. And going over to the assists as well, it's going to look very attractive. As we have 19 here, 17 for Jao Mario. We've got Stefan coming in here with 13, Atavio with 11, 10 coming in for Taremi, Uribe coming in with 9, and 8 coming in for Vendel as well. Then quite a hat-trick with 7s here as well. So a lot of players getting involved in terms of the assists and also the goal scoring. There's not really much I can complain about. A fantastic season with the current Porto side. Coming over and tested with the 98 version of Porto, and unfortunately not as impressive. Still a very good season. However, we did finish second in the league, but we did, however, win the treble of Portuguese trophies, being the Portuguese Cup, the Portuguese League Cup, and also the Portuguese Super Cup. So still quite an impressive season. We scored 120 goals and only conceded 21 as well. And actually were tied on points for that second place position. So not the best of the best, but to be fair, still quite a good season. In terms of the team stats, we are going to be featuring in five or six of them on this occasion, should I say. As most goals come in at 120, most shots come in at 793. Fewer shots come in at 158. That is obviously against us. Most dribbles made at bang on 700 quite funny to see that fewest conceded coming in at 21 and the most clean sheets coming in at 22 in terms of the data hub we are going to be looking at just i mean it's quite an improvement on the previous porto or the current porto side conceded a little bit more though 0.12 more conceded but 3.53 goals per game conceded at 0.62 over 23 shots a game an 87.47 pass completion and attacker win ratio which is practically touching 77 so a really impressive set of stats there and if we go over to what is going to be some of the goals, let's go and have a little look at that. It's going to be Jardel coming in with 84, really carrying the bulk load there. 
We're then going to turn to Dralovic coming in with 37. 32 coming in for... I'm going to butcher names here. I'm going to butcher names, so I'm not going to say it, but 32 coming in here. Please educate me if I do butcher any names, because I am trying to iron that out. We're going to have Costa coming in with 14, 7 coming in here, and also 7 here. So again, we're seeing a familiar pattern. Obviously, this was significantly um, carried by one more player, but to be fair, we also do have a couple of players scoring in the 30s, so it pretty much is the same. In terms of the assist, absolute incredible scenes here. 43, 21, 20, 19, 15, 10, 9, 7, 6. So we're seeing a lot more of a contribution in terms of the sheer amount these players are offering. So pretty much better in that aspect with this older sort of style of team. But to be fair, putting each squad side to side, they are better at different things. The older Porto team seemed to score more goals. The current Porto team didn't score as much, defended better, and won more trophies. So probably out of the two, the current Porto side is obviously the better one. I'm not saying that in real life football as well, but um, in this game and the results I got, that is definitely how it sort of how it sort of looks. But overall, two fantastic tests, and I think what's left for us is we've got to go watch some of these goals. So we are going to watch some of the cup finals or all of the cup finals from the current Porto team season, as a lot of them were sort of one goal margins, which is a typical Mourinho-based tactic, really, as it's going to be João Mario going down the right hand side, a great ball in a two to Remy inside of 20 minutes, and we actually missed a penalty early on here. As well, but this is the first cup final. Obviously, the Portugal Portugal Portuguese Cup final against a very good Benfica side. And to be honest, we absolutely dominated it. We deserve to score more than one goal. Dominated possession, better XG by quite some mile as well. And overall, not a bad first final. But it surprises me how close a lot of these games were. We then go over to the Champions League final, which does actually go to penalties, so we won't watch all of the pens. But if, in fact, we might watch the pens. We'll treat ourselves. But Tottenham actually do take the lead in 11 minutes. But luckily. He bounced back quite quite quickly after that, to be honest with you. 24 minutes, obviously a 13-minute gap before we finally get our equaliser. And Pepe just finds a great bit of space to João Mario out on the right-hand side into the star man. And realistically, he's never going to miss from there. In terms of the penalties, we'll watch a little penalty shootout. I feel like we rarely get a chance to. So obviously, it's going to be Taremi who steps up first, slots it into the bottom right-hand corner. Harry Kane steps up, hits it, and misses is that because he wants to transfer? Let me know in the comments. Where's Kane going to go? We then step up again and tuck it into the exact same position as we did before. White steps up here again. Quite a cheeky little pen almost down the middle. Sends the keeper the wrong way. The Iceman himself steps up. And again, we always go on the right-hand side of the goal. Kulaveski steps up now into the bottom left. Quite a nice driven penalty, to be fair to him. Bruno Costa steps up, hits it. And again, the same corner, but an unstoppable penalty. And obviously, that is the deciding factor. Regarding the actual game, though, to be fair to Tottenham, they did actually put on quite a good display. More possession, but where we really come into our own is the better XG, the bet more shots on target, and the overall shots on goal. So I would say it was a deserved win. So we can't actually watch the Super Cup at the start because the game is obviously, it was right at the start. We can't click on the highlights, but it was a 6-0 win. But I thought I'd show you a little league game just so we can see some more goals. Obviously, both of the cup games were very, very close as I don't know what has happened there, but this was a very comfortable 5-0 win against Casa Pia, obviously over in the Portuguese division. It's going to be Matias there, finds Grudchich. He's going to take a touch. Absolutely mocks that player good, or Godwin does somewhat recover it, but end up we end up winning it back, and the Masso tucks it in to the right-hand corner. So far, so good in this game. 2-0 inside of 12 minutes. And as you can see from the scoreline at the top, we don't slow down here as the, I was about to call him the R9 region. I better not go that far. But over a very composed finish there from Taremi. I'm surprised he didn't run in and try and get the tap in, to be honest with you. But overall... This formation, guys, is such a treat to use. It's very difficult to make narrow formations, I sometimes think. But this one here, the 4 3 one, two, just links up so well. The midfield's a real unit. They, they defend together. They obviously track back together. A lot of them go forward together. And it's just a really good way of playing football. And overall, we didn't struggle against any of the top teams. We always come out on top. And trust me, if you're not afraid about not using wingers, like as in you'd rather not use them, please do give this a shot, guys, because this tactic is absolutely incredible. And that leaves us with one more thing to do, and that is to break down this fantastic Mourinho Porto tactics. If you do enjoy the rebuilds and tactics on this channel, though, please do leave a like, drop a little subscription, and turn on notifications. This way, you're never going to miss a video or when I go live, which are going to be returning very shortly over exclusively on YouTube. And also, 
while you're there, drop a little comment on what rebuilds or manager recreations you want to see next. So this is going to be Mourinho's Porto. Now this is going to be built obviously around the 4-3-1-2 and I'll quickly thank all of the names coming down the screen right now. These are going to be the new or existing Patreon members. Patreon's a fantastic way to support your favourite creators and if you do wish to join you can click the link in the description. You also unlock fantastic perks including all three download files to this tactic, early tactic release, early video release, priority in your tactic and rebuild requests, one-on-one -on -one tactic help and access to all of my exclusive giveaways, which are going to include a couple of copies of FM24. Do not fear though, you're not forced to do this as that is why I do spend a little bit longer at the end of the videos going over the exact player roles and any changes you see will be displayed in the video because the last thing I want to do is make people feel like they have to do that because your support already by watching this video helps me out massively. But let's go ahead and talk about this tactic then. So, it's going to be built around a 4-3-1-2. The mentality, well, I'm going to say the mentality. The mentality is going to be built around a positive mentality in possession. We've got fairly wide overlap left, overlap right, pass into space, slightly shorter passing directness. I did try this on more direct, but in my opinion, way too wasteful of possession, and it just really affected the results we were getting. A slightly higher tempo, so again, quite friendly on how your team operates. Not going to be too intense on your players either. Should eliminate some of them injuries. Pass into space, a real key thing to have, because hence the, what it does, it passes the ball into space, and you saw how direct some of those goals were. That is a real reason why. Mix crosses, work ball into box, and run at defence. If you have got two ridiculously tall strikers, you could obviously have this, on floaters, or if you haven't got tall strikers, not a nice mix, have it on low. You can sort of tweak that to how your team is. There's a lot of stuff with the tactics you have to tweak to your sort of preferences. In transition, we have got regroup, because obviously when possession has been lost, I don't want to apply too much of a press and style. We want to regroup, and as you can see by this lovely image here, these are pretty much all the sort of front line, but this sort of diamond here, this triangle, more triangle, drops back and defends as a unit, and that is exactly what Mourinho was known for. Then, when we have obviously one possession back, we want to counter, we want to fly at them, make them under pressure, and you can see here by this lovely diagram here, the wing backs are going to absolutely fly forward, the midfield flies forward, and also the strikers makes runs in behind and is a nightmare to deal with. Distribute to the fullbacks and also the centre backs and out of possession we have got the mid block, the standard defensive line, get stuck in and much more often on the trigger press. Now going over to the player roles we have a goalkeeper on defend, no custom instructions, nice and basic. We have a fullback on support, on cross aim centre, run wide with ball, get further forwards and also stay wider. We then have a central defender on the default and partnered alongside another central defender on defend on the default. On the left back, we've got a full back on support on cross aim center, run wide with ball, get up over forwards and also stay wider. The free in midfield on the right hand side, we've got a central midfielder on support on take fewer risks, shoot less often and also tackle harder. In the middle, we've got a ball winning midfielder on defend on the default. And next to him, we have got a box-to-box -box midfielder on support on run wide with ball, get further forwards and also move into channels. Going over to the sort of cam in the team, the advanced playmaker, we've got him on attack on roam from position and move into channels. And then we've got an advanced forward on attack on shoot more often and exactly the same next to him because they are going to be your goal scorers. Now, if you are trying to eliminate some of the cards that you're picking up, you can tell typically this midfield area to ease off tackles. You're not going to be as intense at winning the ball back, but it will eliminate some of those bookings. And that is one thing you can do to sort of alter that and tweak it to your needs. But that is going to be the default version broken down. Obviously, we go over all variants on this channel. So now let's go over and check out the attack and variant. So if we do a little refresher here, you can see, obviously, this is going to be the default version. So there are some changes coming right away, which you could probably notice pretty much just taking a little glimpse of it. So the fullbacks are going to be one of the major changes. The fullbacks are actually going to be now on attack on cross aim center, run wide with ball and also stay wider. That's going to be exactly the same on the left-hand side as well. Essentially, that just means that these fullbacks can go forward and have a real impact on the game. We then have the centre midfielder who has got a bulk load of instructions now on attack on take fewer risks, dribble more, shoot less often, roam from position, move into channels and also tackle harder. And the box-to-box, -box, again, is just pretty much the same, just with the additional move into channels, get further forwards, and also run wide. Essentially, these two are now very attacking in this system. The ball winning midfielder remains the same. The front three remain the same because they are already quite attacking. But this is just a much more attacking variant 
on that basic 4-3-1-2. In terms of the mentality, we also up that to attacking. In possession, as you can see, we now opt to have run at defense and also be more expressive selected in those areas. Just to make the tactic a little bit more, a little bit more aggressive, you know? In transition, we've actually now got distribute quickly on. We're going to be we're keeping it exactly the same of how when you know possession has been lost because we don't want to change the entire philosophy of how the tactic works. And still, the counter attack works really good with an attack and style. And out of possession, we've got the higher defensive line, a mid block line of engagement, get stuck in, and also much more often. And this is just the way of pushing your team up the field a little bit and sort of putting a lot of pressure on the opposition's back line. Now, going over to the defensive variant, so a little memory refresher. This is a default version, and this is going to be the defensive version. So, again, some changes come in. The fullbacks remain the same as what you saw in the default version. The centre mid goes on defend, on take fewer risks, shoot less often, and also ease off tackles. The ball with midfielder remains exactly the same. The box to box remains on support, but he's told to move into channels and also ease off tackles. And the advanced playmaker is simply just on support, on the default we now take a more palm approach to the game an even more drop off approach to the game easing off the tackles letting them have the ball and just soaking up the pressure and eventually when we win it back we absolutely fly forwards but we remain with a positive mentality simply because in this game any narrow system in my opinion when you start putting it on balance you don't really have a chance you haven't literally got a foothold in the game in possession We've got a fairly wide pass into space, slightly more direct. Now, I know I said before it was wasteful in possession, but this is now a sort of style which you deploy in the last sort of five to 15 minutes where you're not afraid to soak up. And when you get the ball, just try and get a chance. Just hit the ball long, try and counter attack. Hence why we've got that style partnered alongside of the slightly lower tempo. Again, not as aggressive. We're saving our legs just in case that chance does come. And we've also got time wasting all the way maxed out too frequently. In transition, we have got re regroup, let's say regroup, regroup counter slow the pace down obviously we are trying to waste some time and also when we do have the ball or when the keeper has the ball distributes it over the opposition defense just in case you know we can get a little flick on or something like that it is a bit of a negative way of playing but it is a Mourinho sort of style and he does anything for a win and out of possession, we've got the standard line, the mid-block line of engagement, and also drop off more. I did try and have a lower defensive line, but for me, it was a little bit too negative. Even for me, who loves that style of the game, for me, this is what you want to be working with, with more often on the trigger press. And that is going to be three fantastic variants of Mourinho's Porto broken down. Sorry how long this has taken. There are tons of suggestions, but please do keep them coming. It does mean the absolute world to me. You guys finally getting your videos, which you wish to see, because it's rewarding for me as well, you know, but if you guys do enjoy the videos on this channel please do leave a like drop a little subscription and turn on the notification bell and i'll see you in the next video enjoy the rest of your day i'll see you later